Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on animal welfare certified bone-in beef short ribs, sustainable wild-caught sockeye salmon, and more. Find sales on Parmigiano-Reggiano, charcuterie and ground lamb. Grab an olive boule bread from the bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Back with another episode of Keeping Current with Kansas City. This is that Bell from Kansas City Soccer Journal with me, Daniel Sperry from the KC Star. How are you, Daniel? Are you, you hungry yet? Am I hungry yet? I've had enough food today, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we both went to the KC Current Media thing at the stadium where they gave us samples of food uh, from, I think, all of the vendors and... I know I left there not being hungry at all. I finally just ate something right before we got on this pod and not a whole lot of it because I was pretty full. How about you, sir? Yeah, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of really good food. Uh, we'll go over a lot of the items that we got to try today uh, for you. Give us our, you know, our true review here. Um, the, uh, the one place that will have food there that was not featured today was Yoli Tortilleria. Um, so I don't, I don't know, they never said why they weren't there, but they were not a part of, uh, the, the demonstration today. I thought they but, were the stuff over in the corner. Oh, so the stuff, the stuff in that corner, as we, you know, talk about this in, in terms that none of you can understand of what we're talking about in the room that we were in, there was like the line of all these food trays that you could just walk up and grab the little boats, the paper boats of food. And they, um, they, yeah, they had one spot in the corner that had some wrap that had tortillas. And so we were like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's it. Come to find out that's not it. That was the River City Collective or River something, whatever. It's their like catering and um, like in-house chef team food concepts. So they will have, they have other stuff for like that they'll cater in boxes and other things like that so, um that's what that was for badge reference we'll talk about their food because we did try it um but that that's what it was it was not the only tortilla we will have some like legit tacos and mexican food uh yeah so let's just cover them since uh that's who we were talking about uh i, I thought it was the only tortilla since somebody thought it was and i just went with it but you can blame me for that. Like I, I was the one who was kind of like, well, maybe that's them. And so you could well, kind of made me. sense since it was, everything was in tortillas or along that yeah. line. Uh, yeah. and I don't know their food. So I just went with it also. So I had, uh, a Cuban nachos <clears throat> and a quesadilla ish thing. The Cuban nachos I thought were decent and the crunch wrap quesadilla sort of thing was okay i didn't love it but it was all right yeah there are a lot of vegan um or vegetarian options in this stadium and i am neither of those things um so the the crunch wrap was one that i don't um i i liked the flavor of it to me there's too much beans but it was like a jackfruit and, and black bean um, crunch wrap. It had great flavor to it. it. I just am not a huge, I'm not a big fan of legumes, Thad. 
So um, it's uh, I'm okay with beans, but I, I'm less so on the black beans. They just have a slightly different flavor that I don't like as much. So yeah. I didn't, I actually didn't pay too close attention to what it was made of, but I just knew it was vegan or vegetarian or one of those. And I thought it was okay. I mean, if it was, uh, if it was food served to me, I would eat it, but I would probably have went with something else if I had to go back for more. Yeah, they, um, they also have a, um, there was a couple other options that they had them specifically um, that was, uh, where is it? Here it is. Um, <clears throat> they had, um, uh, there's a smash burger that they did not have um, to try for us. And they will have a Kung Pao chicken wrap as well. Um, so those all sound phenomenal um, on top of that. But that is the river. It's the Riverfront Collective. There we go. That's what it is. Okay. Um the so smash burger did look good. Yeah, the smash burger looked phenomenal. So, um, very impressed. Um, let's see what else we could go from. I'm thinking like left to right in order of what we tried. So, what about Waldo Thai? Um, I liked it. Every, literally every single thing that we ate was phenomenal. Uh, like bar none, right? Oh well, yeah, but I mean, there's some that are better than others. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one of the two Waldo Thai dishes and I really, really liked it. And I know you had the other one. I had both. Okay. I ended up grabbing a bite of both that they had. Um, so if you don't know Waldo Thai, um, also, uh, if you've ever heard of Buck Tui, which is over in Overland Park, um, the owners of Waldo Thai own Buck Tui. Um, they have phenomenal Asian uh, mashups. Um, so there, um, they had what was Cow Todd Nam, um, sod, which is a cow tom nan sod, which is a tossed crispy rice, pork sausage, peanuts, and Thai chili wrapped in lettuce, which so kind of like a pork uh, lettuce wrap in a way. Um, and then they had a lemon grass pork uh, with rice, vegetables, uh, pickled vegetables, and a very good spicy char garlic chili sauce. Both phenomenal. There will also be a rice noodle bowl with meat options. Um, as well as vegetarian options for the protein and tofu and jackfruit, which I think you'll hear as a common vegan uh, alternative or vegetarian alternative protein uh, amongst all these foods. All right. Next down the line after Waldo Thai. Um, I think it was Joe's KC at that point. Um, I think they were farther down, but maybe they eh. We'll make sure we just cover everybody. Let's make sure of that. Joe's KC, pretty much everybody yeah. knows what you're going to get there. Yeah, uh, they're serving serving a brisket. They'll have a smoked chicken. Z, or, sorry, the, they'll have the Z-Man sandwich you can get, as well as the smoked Z-Man. Um, yep. And smoked I, chicken Z-Man, sorry. And I know you were giving me a hard time because I was eating something that I knew exactly what I was getting, but I can't turn down a, a quarter of a Z-Man sandwich. I don't blame you. I just like I said. I like I said. My order for a Z man is always on Texas toast, and so I I said this is not my Z man order. You don't have the Texas toast. I know what I'm getting anyways. Let's save my stomach for all the other crazy stuff that they got. Um, so room thirty nine uh, was an interesting uh, experience. There they had a dish. Um, that was called coal roasted root vegetables and a green yogurt dressing. Originally, I heard it as cold roasted, and I was still confused at how the hell you roast something cold. You can cold smoke things like cheese or fish. Like right. That's the thing that you can do. Um, so I was like, man, what's this cooking technique? And then I realized it's coal, C-O-A-L, coal roasted root vegetables, um, which... It's not my thing. It had a cool taste. The Green Goddess yogurt sauce was phenomenal. Um, if you like carrots and beets and all those kinds of things, um, you will enjoy uh, the um, in, you'll enjoy that dish. But it is uh, it's not. I, I don't. I don't know the root vegetable thing and just like eating a bowl of that does not entice me. But it tasted good. So if you do like that stuff, you will enjoy this dish. 
I would love it as a side actually, but that's yeah. again, I'm for somebody who's more into that sort of thing. I do think it was actually very tasty. I could probably eat it without it being a side. I thought the beet was actually excellent. Uh, some of the other individual pieces, uh, the carrot was good. Some of the other stuff was not as good, but as a combination, I think it was really good. Yeah, and as well, they will have um, at this stand, um, thankfully going off my my partner in crime at the KC Star, David Hudnall, who does all of our food stuff, he has a great article up um, of all of the different options um, and everything that they have. They've got a braised pork coming uh, at that stand as well. So they will have some meat options there and an arancini uh, with an, uh, some sort of aioli. Uh, Billy's Grocery. Um, man, pretty good, right? Yeah. I don't know what it was, but I really liked it. Yeah, agreed. Um, it was a Asian, uh, it's kind of an Asian salad bowl, um, had, uh, some gluten-free fried chicken and this wonderful peanut sesame dressing, sesame salad. Uh, it was quite good. They will also have a Reuben wrap. And as someone who is a connoisseur of Reuben's and hot pastrami sandwiches, um, I am looking forward to maybe snagging a Reuben wrap instead of press box food one of these times. So, um, Billy's Grocery, the the, veg, the the odd option, the option that is probably not something I would normally gravitate to, uh, tasted absolutely phenomenal. So um, very impressed with them. So would you now try that again? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Me too. I probably, I probably would. Like it was that good. Uh, out of all of the things that I would not consider my normal like things that I would gravitate to, uh, that was the one that I was like, I would probably go back and get that again. Um, pretty easily. All right. Uh, Martin City. That's the one we did. Martin City. Yet. Yep. They had pizza. I think there's three types of pizza. Yes. Uh, that they will serve. Um, I'm looking at it here. There's a cheese, a pepperoni, and then there was a spanakopita. Did you try the spanakopita pizza? No, I went with pepperoni. Yeah. I like spanakopita, so I think it should be good. Um They'll have a couple of the beers um, as well as at their stand um, uh, that, that you'll see um, in the stadium. Yeah, they said that they would have like two of those on tap. Um, I will say Martin City was actually probably the one I was most disappointed with. I don't say most disappointed. I was not as happy with. Uh, I've had their pizza. I've liked it. And mm -hmm. this was kind of like they brought in, you know, pizza boxes with pizza, sliced them up, put them out, and – if they were a little fresher, I probably would have liked them a lot more. Yeah, I don't know. To me, I'm, I'm used to eating cold pizza. Uh, that I love cold, cold pizza. Cold pizza in college uh, was always one of my favorite things. Um, so I, I could care less what room temperature or how fresh I feel my pizza is, as long as it tastes good. And it was pretty darn good. Uh, yeah. What's the other one? Best, okay, local pig. Um, has yes. two that was phenomenal uh, two different sauces there's a smoked barbecue link and then a jalapeno cheddar I had the jalapeno cheddar and my god it was very very good um, and then their house made chips also were really really good uh, so very impressed with that um, and you'll have there's a couple of different all the hot dogs in the stadium I believe are going to be local made by local pig hot dogs yep yep um, that's, uh, that's, what, good. that's what the chef said and I had the the other sausage, I thought it was really good. And not that anybody really wants to know this, but I've been burping it up for a while and it still tasted good. I definitely didn't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, everybody. So think, uh, it was good, though. Yeah, I think we've covered most of the ones that were like the, the very special restaurants, special restaurants that they've added in there. Um, there will be some Boulevard beer available in the stadium as well as... Uh, um, I think we missed two. Uh, Ruby, Ruby's juice. Uh, oh goodness gracious! Thank you, thank and you. And the ice cream. Ruby, G oh yeah, well, ice cream, man. I, I can't believe I forgot about that. Uh, Ruby Jean Juicery had um, kind of like an acai bowl. Yeah. Um, that was I. If you if you like acai bowls, do you like this? Blueberry, strawberry, banana, um, house made granola, acai bowl. It's phenomenal. Did um, you try it? 
No, but I love that stuff anyways. And I've had Ruby jeans, an acai bowl from Ruby jeans before. So I trust that. I trust that it'll be pretty freaking good. And uh, we were sharing a table with Madeline. Don't remember her last name from NPR. And yes. she really, she really liked it. I did not try it because I was balanced. I'll, I'll be honest. I was trying to balance. Like I didn't want to take in too much sugars. So I knew I was going to go for the ice cream. <laughs> so I, I went for the ice cream instead of the healthier ass. I, you know, I'd already had vegan, vegan stuff earlier. So I was going for the ice cream. Yeah. And I was a little sad because they gave us, you know, tasting spoons. They were good though. Yeah. Uh, the, the ice cream was phenomenal. Um, they gave us a, a little thing of each of them. Yeah. Uh, high hopes ice cream. Um, it was a called one was called the Casey current obsession. It was kind of, I don't know. It was good. I don't know how else to describe it. Dad might be able to describe it better than me. Um, oh, it's it was like, no, uh, I don't know. You go. Uh, I know it was a tealish, bluish color that had strawberries in it, so it had the the colors. And I don't know that I've ever really liked a blue ice cream before, but it was tasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the cookies and cream one was really really good and then was the it a bourbon, bourbon pecan yeah it's a bourbon butter pecan uh that one's really that one was really really good um i love like southern pecan ice cream um or like all southern caramel pecan kind of a thing love it um so the bourbon butter pecan was right up my alley the cookies and cream was phenomenal um so the current the casey current obsession the strawberry cheesecake ice cream uh in the color palette of the teams teal and red yes so i would uh i would go for the cookies and cream one first and then the butter pecan bourbon butter pecan yeah all right best thing you ate number one uh the 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 dish from billy's grocery it was really good and then the one from waldo thai yeah i think i would i think i would I'll be a cheater and go for three of them. I'll say the the Billy's Grocery uh, Bowl and the Waldo Thai uh, Lemongrass Pork were the two top two for me by far. Then after that, I really, really liked the Jalapeno Cheddar Dog from Local Pig. Like, I think if you guys, like, I didn't find it to be too spicy, but it had just enough kick to it to, like, let it tingle a little bit. I just, and the, the chips were seasoned and phenomenal so very a couple of my favorite things there and i'm sad that we did not get to try the tacos from yoli tortilleria um, because their food is phenomenal anyways um so i believe i I will be looking forward to maybe grabbing a taco once they're in the stadium and we kind of see their menu but they're they're quite good so i'm sad we didn't get to eat them yeah, it's uh, and you know, then we'll probably get like junk up in the press box. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind uh, how Louisville does it, where they give you vouchers to go to like just the places in the stadium. Yeah, the only problem with that is that their voucher was enough to cover like a burger, a hot dog and fries, or chicken tenders and fries. And the chicken tenders and fries seem to be the one that actually got the most bang for your buck. But but it gave you an option. It gave me an option. Yes. Uh, so anyway, yeah. I, every again, everything was good. Some were better than others. Some things I would go back and try without having it given to me. And I think overall it was pretty good. So, uh, I like every stadium in the world. I hope that they can keep up the quality consistently, and that will yeah, always be a challenge. Be the, it will be, but I think. Um, I think the it's kind of ambitious. You kind of it kind of takes along what the airport tried to do with getting a lot of local Casey flavor and Casey places and landmarks in there. Um, to do so in the stadium is very ambitious, and I think everyone that's part of the food process talked about the fact that that is pretty ambitious to do today. Um, it will be very interesting though to see how well they are able to keep that quality, and uh, you know I think that'll be the test in the long run, but. Overall, they, they brought in the impressed. guy from the Royals Stadium. He was the head chef at Royals. 
don't mm-hmm. know if that's a positive or a negative, but he will be the stadium chef that's responsible for getting the stuff out and all that sort of thing. Where Megan and Colby Garrett, is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They have the, they were the consultants to bring in all of those different restaurants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I mean, I've, I'll say this. I've never had a bad food experience at the Royals. I know maybe some have, but I haven't. So as long as you didn't try the concrete. Did not try the concrete. I did not get that concrete from them. <laughs> we talking we talking stadium concrete or like frozen custard, Andy's concrete, <laughs> like, like a Culver's concrete, right? <laughs> oh you know it was just being snarky about the uh they have bad concrete where Arrowhead has good concrete. So Yes. Oh what a fucking boy. Uh, and I'm not, I don't even get into that fight. I, it was just kind of funny when I read about that. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, I think that we have covered the food side. Everything was pretty good. The, everything was good to really good, I will say. And yeah. now the challenge is to keep that up going forward with 11 and a half thousand people showing up to eat their food. Yeah want to take a little break and come back on the other side to discuss the other aspect of the current stadium that has garnered a lot of attention over the last couple, three weeks. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll be back after this, hopefully short break. It's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, (laughs) That's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. Back with part two of this current episode of Keeping Current. Has a certain ring to it. Last first segment covered all the food. That, that experience, uh, by the way, should say the stadium is coming together really nicely. And quickly, like it, it like when we were there on Friday, we, we were there on Friday for um, an event that had to do with kind of showing off some of the um, accessibility and uh, inclusivity um, places uh, for uh, those with disabilities um, or sensory issues. Uh, Sensory issues, as well as I, don't take. Please don't, for the love of God, please don't take me as this thing that women who are nursing are disabled. But a part of this show off of these different facilities um, was a uh, nursing bathroom that had uh, like a chair and a couch and stuff like that in it um, for nursing mothers. That's um, more of an accessibility um, and availability option. It is. Yeah, yeah. I just, just saying, I'm not saying nursing mothers are disabled. No, uh, but we were there a few days ago to see that, and since then, signage and little touches are coming together pretty quickly. The mm-hmm. pitch was all beautiful and green when we were there that day, mm-hmm. and the you know, but today it was covered, so it was just looking good. It's getting there. I know there will still probably be a few things that are coming together, even maybe past the opening day, but it looks like it's almost perfect. Yeah. um, It's, I think it will be really, it's good to see, like they've got a lot of, um, when we were there last, they had the South, the quote Southwest perch, which is kind of near the press box entry. Um. And that was completely empty, I think, when we were last there. And now they've got a bunch of stuff up there. They're getting the bar and uh, a bunch of the 
um, things set up up there. You see a lot of the club um, and the suites are pretty well furnished and ready to go. Um, the elevator wasn't fully operational for us today, uh, which is fine, um, but we'll get there. But yeah, I mean, everything, it, it, it was crazy how much from Friday to today, um, the stadium looked that much closer to being ready. So um, not that it didn't look right, but it, like you're we're at this stage of the stadium, I think where there's like the to-do list seems still like just as much as it was at the beginning, but they're all a lot of little things that have high visual impact um uh, as they get put up and placed and all that kind of stuff so um really starting to look good and uh you know yeah just the idea that they would have it perfectly finished and 100 percent flawless two weeks in advance of opening is also a little uh crazy to me but um hey uh no. it, it looks good It'll, it's on track to be ready for opening day yeah i mean like little things that weren't ready is they wouldn't let us take a picture inside the press, the actual press box because it had final touches to be put on it. The, the little landing that you were mentioning out there is really nice place to be, but it's going to be like overflow media for the opening game. Yeah. Cause there will be a lot of attention on that stadium for the opening game. Uh, mm-hmm. I forget how many hundreds of requests they had for credentials. Yeah. Uh, I think the it was well over a hundred, maybe much more than that so yeah I, for some reason i was thinking it was like 200 but it maybe i heard that wrong but it's a lot way more than there would normally be mm-hmm. and hopefully that all goes together smoothly and the yeah. the club we were talking about the food earlier i don't think we really mentioned it was in the one club that'll be right mm-hmm. next to the press conference room where fans can mm-hmm. see that I, if you have that access it's mm-hmm. it was nice I mean, I expect it to be nice, like many of the nicer stadiums and clubs. Yeah. I will barely ever be in those sort of places because I'm riffraff, but that's okay. Yeah, it's think of it kind of similar to, not as spacious, um, but very similar to Shield Club uh, uh, at uh, Sporting KC. Yes. Now, all the positive, good stuff. Now, a slightly (laughs) less positive been kind of controversial over the last couple of weeks parking yeah the uh parking 2000 spaces at 50 bucks a space per game kind of surprised people it sure did um you know we, we talked to a little bit about the the parking already so oh i don't want to dive too deep back into it but yes on-site parking fifty dollars um a person you are now able to buy single ticket uh single parking passes um per game as well as the season ticket holders do have that option to buy a full season parking pass um at that price of 50 plus dollars a game uh, there will be no on site. You cannot buy parking on site. No, like you will not be able to drive up to the gate and buy parking. So you just... have to have pre purchased, pre done whatever. Mm-hmm. Correct. Now the other, I think the last time we talked, a lot of the actual plan we had guess at, but wasn't really out there. Um, there will be options to be picked up in the river market area there will be shuttle buses running from their streetcar they will run extra streetcars from across the line so wherever you can find a park along there to the river market and then there will be the like i said the shuttle buses to run down to the stadium or walk or bike that kind of covered all yeah um those who are biking or sorry those who are walking um, or driving, for that matter, uh, the only way for you to get into the, the parking area for CPKC Stadium is going to be off of 35. You cannot, and, and come in and out that way. That's it. You cannot do anything else. Um, the Grand Street Bridge um, that connects the River Market to uh, 
the Ber to the Berkeley Riverfront area will be closed to bike or shuttle traffic only during the times that the shuttle runs. So basically uh, four hours prior to the match, through the match to two hours after the match, that Grand Boulevard overpass to the Berkeley Riverfront will be closed to anybody and everybody except for those on bikes and the shuttles. So um, make note of that for one, for your own traveling sake. Um, so you don't think, oh gosh, why can't we get through here and like screw up and have to go all the way around. Um, just, just wanted to put that out there. The shuttle stops at 7th and Main and 2nd, or sorry, and 3rd and Grand are near a multitude of um, surface or garage parking areas um, that are cheaper than what the Kansas City Current are charging. Um, so if they're going to offer you a free shuttle, in my opinion, go park over there. It'll be a lot cheaper. Um, I think the max you can pay for a day of parking is $25 at any of those lots. So um, I doubt, and they're not going to set up event parking in those lots either um, near there. They can't um, because it's not specific event parking. So um, check those lots if you're looking for a cheaper parking alternative um, as well as um do note that the surface lot at third and grand which is kind of catty corner to the river market area is closed permanently so that lot it'll you'll see it on a map if you look up parking in that area it does not it you cannot get in there i drove by it today to double check you cannot park there which um, one is that so third the corner of so it's there's a surface lot that's like catty corner to where they will pick up and because there is construction and apartment building construction that's going to go on there, that has been closed permanently since November of last year. Okay. Um, but all the other river market parking locations during the weekend too, there are more lots that open up to public parking, either for free or for minimal uh, payment. Um, there's a few garages in the river market. I think I counted there's at least as many parking spots as the current will have on the stadium at the stadium site, there is at least that many within a four block radius of uh, like, like two blocks north, two blocks west, east, south, basically. So really this radius around the seventh and main stop, there are still that many. So you have that many parking spots available um, in that area. So, I mean, Use your head logically if you're looking for other parking stuff, um, because I think that'll help you out. Um, and if you want to pay 50 bucks to park on site, more power to you. Do it. Yeah, it's uh, not a cheap option there. But again, a lot of people, I think the biggest issue was just that they didn't roll this out earlier and as a complete package at first. Right. I'm not saying that the whole plan is bad. No, there, there's very limited options in what they can do with the space they have. That's one of the restrictions of having a, a stadium on the riverfront downtown. You know, uh, if they ever expand, it'll be even worse. But it's just that's one of the restrictions. That's one of the complications. I do think they should have a dock down there. You could pull up your boat. But that's that's all part of the restrictions of being at that location. Everybody thought, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. And then complained when the all the factors came out of how that's going to affect them but it is i don't think they could do anything better about what they're doing except have communicated it better is that a fair statement yeah i agree with that i mean i also think still in my opinion the parking price point is a little outrageous for what you're getting um in in this but it's their prerogative they can set it and that's what it is I, I at first I thought it was outrageous also, but I kind of I can kind of see that if you're going to have a limited amount of parking down there, you want to make it exclusive or not exclusive, but you want to you want to put it at a point where not everybody is going to choose that option and will choose other options. Yeah. So it's actually kind of pushing people to go to some of those other options, and the people who have lots of money to burn or absolutely need to be down there for whatever reason to have those spots those spots i think my bigger yeah. complaint is no tailgating and i know it's going to be limited spaces 
Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts about that? Um, so this is the interesting point. Um, because as you're talking about, this is what happens when you build a stadium uh, in the in an area that you know has limited space and. Eventually, I think as it gets built up, there's breweries and other things that are planned kind of along the the air the, the business drag. I think will eventually get kind of creep its way towards the stadium as the that whole riverfront area gets built up a little bit more. Um, and I think the big thing with that for me is like that. So I tailgating is part of Kansas City culture for for sure. But that's because, for the most part, the stadiums that we have in Kansas City are on the polar opposite connections of 435 and 70 in Kansas and Missouri. And in both of those locations, they were built, and everything for the most part, everything else got built around it. Um, and you have built in the time where you build it outside of the city, you build a giant parking lot, everybody drives out there. Um, this is a city that doesn't have a ton of public infrastructure for downtown travel. Um, so, you know, downtown stadiums, all that kind of stuff, you might have, you know, we're kind of seeing the issue with the streetcar line not being all the way filled out there um, and the limited parking and all that stuff down there. What happens overseas is fans meet at a pub near the stadium before the match. They all meet up there. They sit in the pub and they sing their songs and drink their beers. And they walk over. Um, there's very, I think of like, even like in just in St. Louis, uh, the app, the, the pre-met, like when we went to, I went to cover the St. Louis city game for MLS between sporting and I went way early and I just wanted to check it out. All the buildings around there, there's a bunch of different breweries and restaurants, everybody, there's not a ton of parking. So people hop on public transportation or Uber or whatever, they get to the stadium area and they hang out before the game. And they go in in all these restaurants and these businesses and these brew halls and all this stuff. Um, like that is eventually probably going to be the future of what the buildup is around the stadium. And that's what happens when you get a downtown stadium is that you don't need to tailgate. You have all of these other things. And so because Kansas City does not have a downtown stadium that is regularly used for the function of a multi-home game a year pro sports team. The idea of tailgating has always been like the fabric of like what we do as a sports town before we go to a game and what fans do on a weekend when they're sitting out there for a few hours before as the, as the lot opens three, four hours before the game sitting out there with their friends, grilling a few hamburgers and hot dogs or finishing off a brisket or some ribs and a few beers before they head into the stadium. That's Kansas City culture. And so I think there's like a mix of like, to me, there's a mix of frustration with like, okay, well, that's that's Kansas City's, it's part of Kansas City's culture. Like it seems weird to just completely outlaw that. I also understand that there's, I mean, we, we parked out there today and I've parked in some of those lots that will be parking lots for everybody um, in the teal and uh, green lots and stuff like that for other events that we've been to down there. There's not, like, it's tight. And for cars to be able to move, maneuver in and out and to have all that stuff going, um, you know, to have people popped up in the middle with, uh, uh, with, with the, you know, hacky sack game or the uh the you know bunch of different games uh, what's the uh the bags and the board i can't i, I why have cornhole, cornhole. Good board daniel um so what happens when we record at 10 o'clock some, at night. some people do call it just bags though yep bags cornhole any of those things um you know when you've got that out in aisles and people taking up you know maybe they two friends park next to each other and leave too big of a gap in the middle well guess what uh, so because they want to set up their tent and grill and do all the stuff. Well, guess what? Now someone maybe who paid $50 for parking doesn't have a spot because you're using somebody's spot that they paid for to tailgate. So like, here's the thing. I personally, as a, not, as a Kansas city transplant, um, think that parking, the way the city views parking and, uh, 
and, and these kinds of things is kind of silly and overblown. But at the same time, I also understand that that's like the culture that's ingrained in sports fandom in this city. So I don't know. I don't want to rant too much on it here, but I, and I don't know if that was a rant necessarily, but I think my thought on it is like, eventually I think there's going to be so much built up around the stadium that fans are going to think about parking and hopping over to their, their pub or the brewery or something like that for a little bit before and grab, grab a bar snack and a beer or two before going over. And in reality, you might've spent the same amount of money you would have spent to load out your food for your, your whole tailgate. So, um, you know, yeah, I I I know. that's a thought. And I, well, I don't disagree with you. I do think that when you look at culture, the tailgate culture in Kansas city, it's not just because there's, big parking lots out by Arrowhead and Royals and sporting and such like that. It has become a culture, even if that was part of the start, but I, it's just become that culture. I've been to other stadiums in this country and even around the world where there's big parking lots mm -hmm. and it's the, that culture isn't as prevalent. I mean, if you see people out there, they're <laughs> cooking a hot dog or a burger you walk through Arrowhead on a Sunday and yeah. there are people doing, you know, chef level tier, amazing food out there. It's yeah. not grabbing some cheese sticks from the local bar or something like that. You know what I mean? It's amazing yeah. food that they're doing. They're hosting parties of 50 people yeah. out there and they, the parking lots are wider and such for like that. So I totally get that. But at the same time, it's not like they're taking up every big space with tents and stuff like that. But you see people bring in whole smokers for some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. First time I went to Arrowhead for a game, I was like, holy smoke. And smoke was a really uh, much tamer thing than I said, but a much more accurate thing that I said. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, there was a haze over the top because people were smoking briskets and chicken and everything out there. And I rarely ever go to those games anymore, but when I have, it's like amazing. You walk through and like you might run into somebody you know and get some really good food. You might just get offered food from people you don't know. It's a, just a different atmosphere, and it's it's a huge, huge event. And I don't see it as much when I would go to Royals games because there's 81 of those a year at home, and you know it's weeknights. Oh, there's so many games for the week, yeah. Yeah, it's but you would see it a little bit more on a Saturday game. Mm -hmm. and things like that uh you know with, with the chiefs you see you know there's eight games and it's a big event yeah. actually the last few years there's been a seems to be more than just eight games a year but you know what i mean yeah so that's why it's a little bit different and i hate to see that culture go away because it is a kansas city thing and it may not yeah. be as a kansas city thing for soccer but it still is a kansas city thing yeah you know, and I, I think I, I mentioned this to you yesterday or today as we were kind of mulling over this conversation for the podcast uh, was, okay, maybe tailgating isn't allowed in the parking lots. I think it'd be cool to for the current to maybe if they were willing to build a couple of like community like briquette gates and grates and stuff like that um in, in along the park there and allow find areas for people okay don't want to tailgate you can't tailgate in the lot you can't bring your your giant uh you know oklahoma joe's uh you know giant oil jug smoker that you've got your or your pit boss or anything like that um but you want to you want to grill something you want to you want to do all of that um into the park and into the park area and we'll provide some the grates and the coals and stuff like that um, a couple of not the coals, but a couple of the you know like like public park style grates, um, right. uh, you know barbecue grill areas. I, I think that would maybe. I think that that would be something that I would love to see them try and do, uh, just as a way to say, okay, we do understand that this is part of the culture, and if if you want to bring your hot, bring a cooler or a, a you know bag, it's got some some hamburgers or, um, you know, some ribs that maybe you can finish on the grill or something like that. Uh, when you get the cold hot, you want to go and get out there and start and set up and do all of that. 
cool, great. Um, but you know, I, we'll, we'll have to. I, I think, you know, I know that they've talked about like a walking tailgate and some bunch of other different little pop up kind of events. But like, I think too for the Blue Crew, like tailgates are a very important part of membership draw um, uh, in, in events and fundraisers and stuff that they do with those. So. Yeah, and I, I, I used to are... stop by their tailgates when they were FCKC because uh, they were right there, not very far from where I was parking and walking in. Now, because of yeah. the this last couple of years, the parking was in a completely different ty- uh, scenario and where they were able to, where we I'd have to park versus where they were doing those tailgates, I didn't stop by. But mm-hmm. it, when they were in a place, I would stop by and say hi and kind of get to know them and, you know, stuff like that. So it's just, it's, there's a sense of community when, play people tailgate and i know there's a sense of community when they all walk in together and i i hope that they will create that tradition i just Mm -hmm. hate to see the tailgating aspect of it go away completely so there will essentially be some median medium there will be some meeting in the middle i was trying to find a good way to say that and i was failing there will be some meeting in the middle where uh, maybe there will be a, a at least an area where fans can claim a spot that they can bring in some grills or you know what I mean? I don't know how that will work. And I know that we talked about this, that there is not going to be anything perfect or decided on opening day or the first week or the first month, or maybe the first year, those cultures will have to change and adapt and the fans will complain and say, I want this and want that. And, and legitimately so when i say complain i'm not meaning that in too negative way they will voice their opinion about how they want things and the current will either find a way to make them happy or not and potentially lose some fans yeah yeah i and i i think like i said like you know i think the the hard part for me is like i never tailgated for games uh, that, that was never the thing. Um, every single like venue that I've ever been to for sports, um, I've been to Arrowhead once for an NFL game. Um, we didn't tailgate. We stopped at Wendy's and ate our burgers in the parking lot <laughs> because we were trying to be as cheap as possible because we spent a lot of money on good tickets. Um, the other thing, though, was like growing up in the Bay Area, everything was up on the BART, which is the train, Yep. system that runs through there and it either took you right to the stadium or in san francisco it took us right to the front of the river or the river the ocean <laughs> took us to the embarcadero and we walked all the way from the embarcadero station which is about a two and a half mile uh, not a two and a half mile walk it's about a mile and a half so it's about as long if you chose to walk from the river market to the stadium it's about as long it's about 30 minutes Except there was all kinds of like huts along the way that had like fresh caught calamari or yeah. uh, you know other things, but like that 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 was the experience of going like no one tailgated going into AT and T Park. We walked along the way, grabbed you know when I was old enough to drink, maybe grab a drink along the way. Maybe who knows? Maybe maybe when I wasn't old enough to drink, I won't, won't say won't say all those things. But at the same time, like. You know, you you walk you walk in. You maybe grab some food from a vendor, or stop at a restaurant or a bar outside the stadium, and you go in and you go in about thirty minutes before the game, get your seat, feel comfortable, and you go. And so, like, because that is the sports culture everywhere else, I don't think that if that ends up being the way that things are done around match days at CP Casey Stadium, that I I, I I'm not. I, I won't be naive to think that like Kansas city can't like find a way to adapt to that and eventually enjoy that. But I also get where we're coming from. Like, like you said, the community aspect of tailgating and what that brings and bringing people together um, in that way before the game, I think is a special, a special thing that happens in Kansas city. And I think, like you said, yeah. And, and I, it'd be great if they found some way to meet in the middle with fans on that. And and I'll say this, I haven't seen a ton of like pure outrage over the tailgating, but it's been a lot of like, oh, okay, well, great. I've seen some people complaining about how much it sucks, but at the same time, uh, some of the people who would be most vocal or have already been a little bit outrage uh, tired at this point 
from the cost, yeah. the that the lack of information on the the parking plans and all that stuff. So I think they it's been like oh just another thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, it, there's a lot of people. It's not going to affect. I mean, I know there's people that drive in from Iowa. They're not coming down to tailgate. They're coming down to go see the game, mm-hmm. things like that. And I get that. And it's there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with like the culture that you were talking about about how you got to to games. I've been to games in that way also for, you know, went to sporting events in Japan and it was a completely different thing. And you had little tents by the side selling sushi and yakitori and things like that. So it's, it's different everywhere. I'm not sure that we're going to set up any stands next to the river serving fresh catfish, but you know, maybe. (laughs) Here's some, here's some trout nuggets, baby. (laughs) Uh, but again, it's not wrong. It's just that it does detract from a Kansas City way of having done things. So, all right. Anything else? Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. Anything else for you, Thad? I, I think we've covered it fairly and accurately. Um, but yes, please... Take some time to read over one the rules and regulations for the parking lot. They also like if you want to. They are not allowing alcohol in the parking lot. So like if you want to bring your own beer or something like that beforehand and sit in the back of your truck, you might get in trouble for it. Um, so I encourage you if you're parking, read all the rules and regulations. If you're dry, figure out your plan of um, transportation. Uh, arrival you can find all of those i think on the casey current website um there's a list of all of the different modes of transportation um but yeah it's uh go figure it out don't wait till the day of please i went down and drove through the whole thing just followed the, all the different paths a couple days ago i will do it again before the first game just so i'm familiar because i'm not as used to that area as a lot of people are yeah, I actually, it was funny. I was driving around there the other day. I was talking on the phone, uh, Bluetooth with my wife. And I said, you know what? It's probably a good thing if I get lost down here because I need to figure out how to find my way through back streets just in case I need to. Um, down here, because I'm like, like you said, I'm not familiar, familiar enough with the area. Like <laughs> in my head, I know how to drive downtown, get to the river market or find parking to get to power and light. And that's about it. Um, so to know the roads myself as a suburbanite, um is, is one thing so look ahead plan your routes give yourself plenty of time to arrive um give yourself if you're taking the shuttles give yourself a very good amount of time to arrive just to make sure it's all running smoothly um yeah all right appreciate everybody for listening so follow we will have a uh we're gonna do a pod in just sometime in the not too distant future that will pretty much go through what we expect of the team, each line, probably how we expect the 11s to roll out, that sort of thing. And we'll have that here in the next few days. And we will uh, be back. And we are out.